the Lord in his high priestly prayer asks for unity similar to like what is in the Blessed Trinity. This applies to us. It applies to us on every level of our being. In recent times, the Lord gave a special charism to a group that emerged during the war in Turin. It became the Focolari movement, and the Lord made them aware of living this prayer intensely in such a way that his presence could be felt in the midst. Gesù in mezzo, Jesus in the midst. One can actually look around the Christian world and pick up places where this is lived and others where it is not. There can be situations of apparently splendid liturgy, but if one scratches, it is not always necessarily the case, even there. Whereas there can be simple gatherings of prayer where it is. This preparation for Pentecost is a time to think upon these things. The outpourings of the Holy Ghost are mysterious. I heard when a child from my grandfather how in the early 1900s in Wales people had been crying out and he meant crying out physically for the coming of the Spirit. It was strange that this was happening in different parts of Wales at the same time. And then he calmly added, Agmithokos. And he came. It was a hurricane. People who from the outside came to see what was going on were puzzled. It was more than just a social factor. There was something going on that was massive. And there were even signs, the moving lights, Golai Egrin. We are very good at arguing the Holy Spirit away. It can happen actually even in places and positions of authority. Human prudence can manage to field well the impulses of the Holy Ghost in the form of desires that the people actually might have. But some will not think outside the box. It is too risky. And so the grace goes elsewhere and is lost for that part of the church. But it is also possible to mistake human imaginations for genuine inspirations and also to confound the spectacular with the work of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of peace and anything spectacular in his case has the note of being deep. The superficial is not his work. And in the superficial it draws attention to itself. Much of the human can be mixed. 
The spirit, on the contrary, is a spirit of peace. As St. Paul said, a spirit of concord rather than discord. And if we are in discord and for various issues creating the same, we are not living the prayer of the Saviour. At times it is easier to be calmly united with the Lord in a liturgy which carries itself, which is after a while, as it were, automatic, because one isn't thinking about the right. It can be splendid if it is done every day, but not drawing attention to itself in the mind, it leaves the mind free to fly to God who is being honoured. We are not here to perform for human beings. The liturgy has to be a locus for encounter and union, and it is par excellence the place of living the prayer of the Saviour. Liturgy is not there as a battleground or as a place for causing pain. If one comes out of a liturgy hurting, something has gone wrong. These hours that separate us from Pentecost are hours of waiting in Jerusalem until you are given power from on high. The Lord appeared to St. Paul, indicating how he had given witness at Jerusalem and now had to do the same in Rome. The concentric circles indicated at the ascension, being his witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world, about to be fulfilled. And from Rome it comes to the whole Western world, and we still have the Latin as the basis of our liturgy. When we use the words, Hunc preclarum calicem, this most excellent chalice, we are reminding ourselves that we are using the same words as St. Peter and the Apostles were using when they had the same chalice as was used at the Last Supper in the early celebrations. And it would seem that the word et eterni testamenti and eternal covenant comes from an early tradition that has always been there. We have power, therefore, and the spectacular work of God is profound, not noisy, but effective. Thank you.